Yeah. Hi folks. Hey, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm in the process of doing some uh, glazing. I actually had a bisque firing and um, some of the pots were a little bit uh, over fired in the bisque firing. So I have now got to find a way to be able to glaze the pots because as you know pots that are um, over fired don't very easily take a glaze because they're not as absorbent. So anyway I thought I'd just bring you in on it because sometimes people write to me and say that you know they've over fired their kiln and what can they do. So maybe this you might find this helpful. So just join me. I'm just going to take the camera off the tripod here. So in this room here, I've got some some pots here. These some there are some tankards, some um, ramekins, and one or two others. So what I'm doing is, and you can do this yourself. Uh, you see basically these are these plate warmer uh, trays um, you probably will have seen them I got these from yard sales for next to nothing they're brilliant things to have in your studio so if you ever see them for sale at a yard sale grab them okay now these are these pots have been on here they're they're fairly warm um, and um, to help trap the heat you can put a piece of uh, aluminium foil over and that will help the temperature otherwise they get very hot on the bottom and not so hot higher up okay so what I'm going to do is now you will find that they will get very hot on the bottoms if they're bottomed down and then they can become now that one there I don't know if you can see that one is quite over fired. So I'm just going to grab grab a bunch of these. Probably should grab a few more. I'll put them here. So basically, I mean if you don't have the plate warmer, don't worry. Uh, if you've got a, a stove, a wood burning stove of some kind. Um, let's just get a couple more you can use that. So what you want to think of doing is is heating heating them up you see that's the thing that's what you've got to do. Now depending on on the you listen to this see that's a bit hard I've got some up here that are, are more as they should be. You may be see that they are slightly different colour. See that? See that? How that sounds? So this is more absorbent, isn't it? You'll also notice it's a little bigger. That's because as it gets overfired, it begins to vitrify. In other words, begins to melt all the fusible, meltable parts of the clay begin to melt and that causes a reduction in the size you see so you can see that there how that's got a bit over over fired whereas this one is more pink in color okay just wanted to show you that okay the next thing let's put this camera on the tripod so these are just some things that you can you can you can practice um, you can do, I should say. Um, one, heat, heat up, heat up your bisqueware. Number two, when you go to take your glaze bucket and you notice that there's some water on the top of the glaze, all right, take some of that water off. Maybe you might find you know you've got a couple of jugs or three jugs you, you might want to take off, depending on the size of your bucket. Okay. 
So you're going to render the glaze thicker, okay? Now, if you, if you fired your kiln, like a lady recently wrote to me and said that she, uh, instead of firing a kiln up to um, the usual bisque temperature, she took it all the way up to cone six or something. And you, you see, if you're gonna get, if you've got, if you're gonna get to that degree of, of being over fired, you don't really have any chance of being able to glaze it successfully, okay? What I'm talking about here is just over firing your pots, uh, you know, a little bit, not excessively. <laughs> Certainly not taking them up to, um, right up to stoneware temperature. Okay, so next thing is make sure that these are are dusted. Why is my neighbour out there with his lawnmower right now doing whatever he's doing? <laughs> okay, so now this one is, let's just, well while we're here you might as well watch me double dip this because that's what I'm going to do. Sorry about that. <laughs> Camera fell off the tripod. <laughs> Seems to be still filming there. Gosh, how did it do that? It completely fell down. Luckily, I've got some... <laughs> i got these... You see, i got these padded mats here. It fell down and landed on one of the padded mats. <laughs> oh, that was lucky, wasn't it? It could have landed on the floor. That wouldn't have not been so good. Okay, anyway, let's double dip this. This one is, is warm, it's not really, really hot. So another thing is, you see, you usually would hold your, your pot in the glaze. Now hold it down a little longer than you would normally, okay? No, I held that a good while extra, but probably I will need to, to do that, okay? These are all tips, you see. This one is a little bit more over-fired. Hold him down. Dee, 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 dee. Hold him down there a little bit extra time, you see. Okay, up. <laughs> I can't believe that the camera just fell off the tripod right onto the floor. I must have not have uh, secured it in the... Um... So, holding it down. Usually they say, hold it down for four seconds. That's what, as a rule of thumb, people say. But I'm holding it down for more than four seconds, as you can see. Okay. That's double dipping, so that's dipping the inside and the outside at the same time. Dee, 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 dee. Keep it there. Two, three, four, five. You've got to get the glaze you see to adhere to the bisque. Well, if there's no porosity in the bisque, well, then the, the, the glaze is, is going to have a tendency to run down, isn't it, without sticking. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do the next the next stage the next stage tips and tricks <laughs> for getting around your uh, your mistakes you see well we all make mistakes don't we we all things and this is a, a very I can remember at home you know my dad at a pottery at Lower Dam, um, we would uh, sometimes, perhaps occasionally, they would overfire for whatever reason. And my dad would be frantically putting them all on the, uh, on the stove. Um, 
Yeah, on the stove, warming them up. So having having done that, you see, what I'm now what I'm now going to do is take this guy. When you're doing this, you can use you can use a hot air gun as well. Okay, I use this because it's more potent. But if you are using this, don't hold it in in one place for too long. Okay, keep moving it. You see. You want to do this enough so that you begin to see steam. Okay, folks, I just wanted to to show you that. Um, yeah, we might you might see a bit of steam coming off of there. I don't know. I can see steam, but these are some that I did. These are all over here, part of that same batch, and. Um, they look like they're going to be okay. Alright, so a few tips there for you um, about overfired over -fired bisque and how to resolve it. Heat it up, number one. Number two, <clears throat> take some water off your glaze. Number three, hold the pot in the glaze a little longer and number four use one of these to help okay and um, I hope that's been of some help to you um, please go to my website simonleachpottery.com uh, we do and still are running workshops here we've got a workshop coming up uh, this weekend on the 5th, 4th or this Saturday anyway um, and there's July, I think July is full, but August is still got open and September, October, November, December, I don't know, maybe December as well, depending on the weather. So, okay folks, thank you very much for joining us, take care, keep practicing, and I'll see you in the next clip. Bye bye.